in this lesson we're going to be looking at finite resources. So here we have a graph that sort of shows lots of different resources, oil, coal, gas, uranium and some of the more common metals. And what it shows is how long it's projected until those resources run out. So remember a finite resource is a resource that will run out. So you'll notice most of them have sort of two end lines. So the sort of thick bar tells you how many years we have remaining or the year in which we're projected to run out if the rate of consumption uh, continues to grow at what it is currently growing at. So the issue is we're not consuming the same amount of oil every year. The population is growing and year on year our consumption of oil and crude oil is increasing. So if that continues at the same rate, then the sort of thick bar tells you the projected end date. Uh, the thinner bar, which goes a little bit further, that assumes that the rate at which we are consuming these resources no longer changes. So however much we're consuming right now, if it's assumed that that stops increasing and just carries on static, um, how long it would last extra. So what I'd like you to do is for the following resources, so for crude oil, natural gas, and the, these three metals, silver, gold, and copper, uh, from this graph, estimate how many years we have left if production remains static. So that's the thinner bar. And how many years we have left of these resources if the rate of consumption continues to grow at the current rate. So for oil, gas, silver, gold, and copper, use this graph to estimate um, when it will run out and therefore how many years we have left of each of these resources. Okay, so let's have it. So we'll start off with crude oil. So if production remains static, so the rate of uh, production stops increasing, that looks to me at about 2052. So that would give us 32 years left. Now, if it continues to increase, it will run out a little bit sooner. So let's just go up. And again, these are estimates. Um, so I'd we'll go down the middle. I'll say that's 2030. Sorry, 2045. So that's going to give us 25 years before crude oil runs out. If we continue to con consume it at the rate at which we're consuming it. Uh, natural gas. So if production remains static, that will last until I'll make that 2074, I reckon. So that's going to give us 54 years of natural gas remaining. And if we continue to use it at the rate at which we are using it, it's going to run out far sooner. I make that uh, 2048. So only 28 years of natural gas left. Silver. I'll make that 2034, I reckon. So 14 years left if the production remains static. However, if we continue to use it at the rate at which we're using it, I'll make that about 2028. 20, so only eight years left before the silver runs out if we continue to use it at the rate at which we are using it. Gold. So I make that uh, 2031, so 11 years, uh, if it remains static. And actually, it's decreasing. We're, we're actually using less gold. The, amount of, the rate at which we're using gold is going down. Um, so it will actually last a little bit longer. Um, so I reckon about 12 years if we uh, continue to decrease. The use of gold and copper. Uh, 
again the same as oil I make that uh, 20 40 um, sorry same as gas sorry I make that 20 48 so that is going to be 28 years if it remains static and if it doesn't and we continue to increase our use of it I make that 20 20 38 so let's say 18 years so this column here is approximately how many years we have left of these resources if we continue to use them at the rate that we are currently using them and this is how many years will be left if we stopped increasing the production and just use the same amount as we are currently for the remaining years. So another thing we need to consider other than the fact that these resources are finite and that they are going to run out is the impact on the environment from extracting them. So two examples here, the extraction of aluminium and the extraction of copper. So we have the extraction of aluminium uh, from the ground in the terms of its ore and then it's chemical extraction from its ore in molten electrolysis. And the same for copper, the extraction of copper from the ground in the form of its ore and then the extraction of copper chemically in the blast furnace. So for each of these aspects, so mining the ore, melting the ore, the electrolysis and the production of carbon dioxide at the anodes, what are the negative impacts on the environment from each of those stages? And again, for the extraction of copper, mining of the ore, heating it in a blast furnace, production of carbon dioxide in the reaction and purification through electrolysis. Again, what are the negative impacts on the environment from that process? So the first one we'll look at is the extraction of aluminium. So the impact on the environment from mining the ore. So we have destruction of habitats. We have the CO2 emissions um, associated with the machinery. And again, we need to consider CO2 emissions. We'll consider the greenhouse effect because CO2 is a greenhouse gas. Uh, melting the ore. We need a thousand degrees centigrade needed. That is most likely going to require the combustion of fossil fuels. And these are finite. And again, CO2 emissions associated with that are going to increase the greenhouse effect. The electrolysis itself, you need approximately 150 thousand amps of electricity. There's CO2 emissions associated with the production of that electricity. And again we need to consider CO2 emissions increasing the greenhouse effect. And then finally, the production of carbon dioxide at the anodes. Well, that one's nice and simple, isn't it? CO2 is a greenhouse gas. Therefore, contributes to global warming. What about the extraction of copper? Well, mining the ore, we've got the same thing. We've got destruction of the environment or destruction of habitats. We've still got the CO2 emissions from the machinery.
And with that, we need to consider the greenhouse effect. Heating it in the blast furnace, again, we're looking at about a thousand degrees. And that's going to require combustion of finite fossil fuels. Which are also going to have CO2 emissions. Increasing greenhouse effect. The production of carbon dioxide in the reaction. So, CO2 is a greenhouse gas. And therefore contributes to global warming. And again, the purification through electrolysis, you've got the electricity production. Produces CO2. Well, the vast majority of it does anyway. It's going to increase the greenhouse effect. So it's not just the fact that these resources are finite that we need to consider. We have to consider the environmental impact that they have uh, just from being extracted. So not only will the aluminium and the copper run out if we keep digging it up and extracting it, but we're having a huge effect on the environment and a huge effect on the atmosphere just through going through the process of extracting these materials. So on this page, what we have are four different methods for extracting metals. And the example we're going to use for all four of them is copper. Okay, so we have smelting, which is a reduction by carbon in the blast furnace. We have molten electrolysis. So these are the two methods we've already discussed and looked at. And we've also just on the previous page looked at the sort of negative impacts on the environment from those processes. And we're introducing two alternative processes, phyto mining and bio leaching. So what I'd like you to do is just read through this text. And for each method, pick out the advantages and the disadvantages. So we'll start off with the smelting. So advantages, it's a very quick process and it's a continuous process, which means as long as you keep putting in more of the raw materials, it will keep producing copper. You don't have to stop it and start it. You can just keep going, uh, which is a, a huge advantage. And it produces large amounts of copper. Uh, disadvantages of it, however, is it requires a lot of high temperature. So very high temperature, which requires finite fossil fuels. Which have large CO2 emissions. Which we need to consider because if we've got CO2 emissions, we need to consider the greenhouse effect and global warming. Electrolysis advantages, again, it's very quick, it's continuous, and it produces large amounts of very pure copper, plus very pure copper. But again, we've got the high temperature We've got the uh, electricity needed, so we needed a large electrical current, which again require 
finite fossil fuels and CO2 emissions which again we must consider the impact that has on the greenhouse effect. So let's look at phyto mining first, so advantages. Uh, it's renewable because it uses plants. And actually, going back to this, this is something a massive disadvantage that I haven't uh, included in either of these two. Um, these both use um, ore, don't they? They use um, metal ores, which are finite resources. So um, where can I have, add that in? I'm going to add it in here. So they use finite resources. The ores, the ore that is being used is a finite resource. So phyto mining, however, is renewable and is plants. So it's basically recycling the copper. Um, another advantage is it decontaminates soil or decontaminates the ground. Disadvantages. It is very slow. It produces a small amount of copper. It doesn't produce very much at all. So small quantities. And also CO2 is produced when they can when they burn the plants. So when the plants are burned, produce CO2. And again, we need to consider the greenhouse effect. However, CO2 is produced when you burn the plants, but the whole time the plants are growing, they're taking in CO2 through photosynthesis, so it is carbon neutral. Bioleaching advantages. Again, it's using bacteria as renewable. It uses quarry waste, so we're using waste product to produce copper. So yes, that is finite. It's still using copper ores, which are finite, but they're copper ores that were being dug up anyway, and they are not being used for anything else. They're waste from the quarry. Uh, disadvantages, again, very slow and produces very small quantities of copper. And it can produce um, pollution. So some of the, the chemicals that might be produced in the process could also be polluting. So for all of these processes, there are advantages and disadvantages. And you need to be able to evaluate them based on the advantages and disadvantages. So before we move on, I just want to summarize the two new processes that we've looked at bioleaching and phyto mining for extracting metals uh, and using a flow map uh, just so it's easy to refer back to. So I'm going to start with phyto mining. Okay, so step one for phyto mining is crops are planted in contaminated soil. And the soil obviously be contaminated with the metal you want to extract, most likely copper. So crops are planted in contaminated soil, which absorb the metal, which is most likely, as I said, going to be copper, through the roots. The second thing is the plants are burned to produce ash that contains the metal oxide 
and that's important. So it's absorbing the metal through the roots, but when we burn it, we're obviously reacting with oxygen, so the ash that's produced contains a metal oxide. Step three, and if we recall, metal oxides are bases. Okay, so what we want in order to extract it, we need a salt. So what do we add to a base to produce a salt? We add an acid. So add acid to the ash to react with the metal oxide and produce salt solution. And then finally, use displacement with a more reactive element or electrolysis to extract the metal from the salt solution. Those are your four steps. So the crops are planted in the contaminated soil and then it'll absorb the metal through the roots. You then burn the plants to produce ash and the ash contains metal oxide because the, the metal is going to react with the oxygen when you burn it to produce metal oxide. We are then going to react it with an acid in a neutralization reaction to produce a salt solution containing that metal. Remember, a salt is an ionic compound formed when an acid reacts with a base in a neutralization reaction. So if this was copper oxide and my acid was sulfuric acid, I would form copper sulfate solution. If my acid was hydrochloric acid, and this was copper oxide, I would get copper chloride solution. So we're just going to end up with a salt solution. And then finally, in order to get our metal out of that solution, we can either add a more reactive metal to displace it, or we can simply use electrolysis to extract the metal from the solution. So those are the four key steps to phyto mining. Right, bio leaching. So number one, a bacteria solution is added to quarry waste. So low grade ore from the quarry that isn't uh, good enough to go into the blast furnace. The bacteria extract the metal and create leachate, which is a solution containing the metal salt. And again, just like before with the phyto mining, we're going to extract that metal salt uh, using displacement with a more reactive metal or electro electrolysis to extract it. So use displacement with a more reactive element or electrolysis to extract the metal from the leachate. So those are the three main steps to bioleaching. And what they will most likely ask you in an exam question is either to uh, give a method for bioleaching or to give a method for phyto mining or perhaps to compare phyto mining to bioleaching or perhaps to compare either of these two to the more traditional methods of extraction of metals such as the blast furnace 
or the molten electrolysis. And finally, to finish off, we have some exam questions. So there are two pages of questions, and this should take you approximately 15 minutes. Right, so let's run through this quickly. So how do finite and renewable resources differ? So finite resources will run out. Renewable resources will not run out. Give two examples of finite resources. So metals or metal ores, uh, you could have crude oil, coal, natural gas, any of the fossil fuels really. Um, there's a variety of different things you could have for that. Uh, give two examples of renewable resources. So we could have um, biodiesel, bioethanol, uh, we could probably think about uh, renewable energy resources. So we could have uh, wind power, solar power, things like that. So coal is a fossil fuel that can be combusted. Is coal renewable or finite? Explain your answer. It is finite. It takes millennia to form. Therefore, will run out. The owner of a coal power plant wants to replace coal with wood chippings. Explain why such action is more sustainable than continuing to use coal. So coal is finite. Therefore, will run out. Wood chippings are renewable. Therefore, will not run out. Iron can be extracted from iron 3 oxide through reacting it with carbon. Carbon dioxide is a waste product. Write a word equation for this reaction. So iron 3 oxide plus carbon is going to produce iron and carbon dioxide. Write a symbol equation for this reaction. So uh, the iron is 3 plus, because we're told that there. The oxide is 2 minus, so that's going to be Fe2O3 plus carbon, giving us iron and carbon dioxide. And then in order to balance that, because um, I've got three oxygens here and two over here, I need to find the lowest common multiple, which is six. So I'm going to have to have two of those. So two threes is six. And then three there because three twos are six. So that balances the oxygens. That gives me two times two. That gives me four ions. And I need three carbons. Now, this type of reaction, it is a displacement reaction. But it is also a redox reaction because the iron is going to be gaining electrons and the carbon is going to be losing electrons. Uh, why is electrolysis not necessary to extract iron? Because iron is less reactive than carbon. Therefore, we can use carbon to extract it in the blast furnace in a displacement reaction, which is not ideal, it's a thousand degrees, still quite a lot of energy required, but it's less than electrolysis. So is iron oxide a renewable resource? No. It will run out. Therefore, it is finite. All elements on Earth are finite. What method of extraction 
is used for metals less reactive than carbon. It is reduction by carbon. Or you could say displacement by carbon in the blast furnace. What method of extraction is used for metals more reactive than carbon? We use molten electrolysis. Uh, define an ore. It is a metal compound found in the Earth's crust. Why is gold found naturally in the Earth's crust? It is unreactive. Why is it important to find alternative methods to extract metals? So the extraction methods have high CO2 emissions. So the uh, extraction of copper in the blast furnace, for example, lots of CO2 produced, the extraction of aluminium in the uh, molten electrolysis, again, high CO2 emissions, um, but also a high grade ore. So the ore that's needed uh, for electrolysis and for um, reduction by carbon in the blast furnace is finite and it's running out. So we need to look for alternatives. We need to look, well, where else can we get copper from? You know recycling the metals or extracting them um, from low grade ores from quarry waste or from uh, from the uh, from contaminated soil so high grade ore is finite and running out so just digging up more uh, is not an option state the main steps involved in phyto mining uh, plant a crop Burn to ash, add an acid, and then displace or electrolyze to extract the metal. Phyto mining is often said to be carbon neutral. Explain why. So CO2 produced when burning the plants is offset by CO2 absorbed during photosynth photosynthesis. Right. Purification of copper after phyto mining often involves electrolysis. Explain why this means the process is not carbon neutral. So, electrolysis requires electricity, which produces CO2 when generated. Therefore, CO2 emissions are overall greater than CO2 absorbed during photosynthesis. And finally, state the main steps involved in bioleaching. So add a bacteria solution to the uh, quarry waste. Leachate produced containing metal salt and then displacement with a more reactive metal or electrolysis to 
extract that metal.